Hi, my name is Matt Cardwell. I'm one of the crew here at Cognosys, and today we're going to talk about editing motion profiles on the StackShot 3X controller. So here we have a three-axis move that's controlling two rotary tables and a slider, and this video is about editing the axes. So to do that, we hit Edit Axis, and now we're presented with a single axis move. We can look at the other ones if we want just by pressing the different buttons over here to switch between the axis. And what we're going to do first is demonstrate how touching any point along the curve will actually move all three axes to their corresponding position. So if I hit here, you'll see all three axes move over to where they need to be. And we can jog it around as needed. And if we want to move to a specific time, we can also move to a time of, let's say, seven seconds. So we have pretty decent flexibility there for getting to where we want to be. It's nice to check your framing at different points so you don't have to go through a whole move if it's a lengthy move. This way you can set it up and double check to make sure everything looks good from start to finish. So next, let's see here, we want to add a keyframe. Now to do that, all you have to do is go to a certain spot on that curve. So let's say, um, yeah, we'll go back to that. We'll, we'll move the playhead back to that, that seven second point. So we do the move to seven seconds, and then we're gonna hit add keyframe. So here, you, you're given a list of options. Uh, we've already set the time to seven, so we wanna set, set the keyframe there. We can either add it just on the X axis, or we can add it on all three. So if you've adjusted the positions of everything, then you can, uh, uh, you can add with one button press a keyframe across the board. For this setup, we're going to add a keyframe just to the X axis. So you can see it's in red because it's the current, the current keyframe. Now what we're going to do is edit that keyframe. Let's say that's not quite the position we want. To do that, we just hit edit keyframe and change position. And we're changing the X axis position. So we're gonna move that back just a little bit and say good with that. And when we're done, we do use current position. And you can see the velocity curve changed a little bit, flattened out a bit. If we go back and edit it some more, and do change position, we're going to flatten it out quite a bit more. So here you can see that by flattening that out, I've actually made the velocity a little too fast. Uh, this is just an example. I really don't want a keyframe there anyways. We want to remove a keyframe. We just do edit and delete and then it's gone, and we're still left with the same time. It's the same approach if we want to change the end position. We don't want to go through the helper process and answer all the questions to change that one axis end position. So what we can do is just go there, we can hit edit keyframe, and then there we can go and change that position if we want. So we just move whatever position we want and use current position. And then there we go. The curve won't look any different, but the distance has changed, or the, the amount of displacement, the degrees has changed, uh, because the, the move profile still looks the same. So why would you want to add a keyframe? Well, you can have up to five keyframes, and one of the reasons is, is to tweak the position slightly at a given point. Uh, let's say you want some dwell time. So let's say between this position here, we're going to move the playhead there. We're going to add a keyframe at that position, add a keyframe at X, and we're going to move over here. We're going to add a keyframe at X. So now we have two keyframes there. What we can do then is adjust their position to kind of try and slow the speed down a bit. We're going to try and bring that guy, the keyframe that's currently highlighted, down a bit, and that should slow down that, that velocity curve there, at least between those two keyframes. 
So if we do edit keyframe, we're going to change the position. We're going to make it a little further back. Use current position. There we go. So we'll see the velocity speed up. It gets to that keyframe. It's going to slow down and dwell a little bit. And then it's going to pick up so it can get to that final, uh, the final position. And if we want to see what that looks like, just hit home. We'll send everybody back to the zero position. And let's give it a look. You can see the x-axis is slowing down, and then there it's going to speed back up again. There we go. So here we have the velocity slowing down. What if we actually wanted to stop things from moving in between those two points? What we can do is, if we go back to this keyframe, we can do an edit. What we're going to do is have it ease into that keyframe. See how the velocity curve jumps there? It's not continuous. It goes to zero and then it goes back up. That is not good. You don't want to see that in your curve. So what we want to do is also ease out that keyframe. That looks pretty good. The velocity goes to zero in this condition, which is perfect. Now, if we play this, we'll get a full stop at that 7.2 seconds. Perfect. And that's a basic overview of adding and editing keyframes with the StackShot 3X controller. If you have additional questions, feel free to read our owner's manual. There's additional details in there. Thank you for watching.